Next is case five. Let's see here what the history says. And this is a five-year-old female with a polypoid mass protruding from the cervix, uterine cervix. All right, so what did you think for this lesion? Uh, so it's obviously polypoid, as you said. Um, it's got a stratified spinous epithelium on uh -huh. Um, and then underneath you have uh, this loose um, appearing uh, stromal component to those. Yes. Um, and I was debating whether there was or was not a Grenz zone in this. Um, I was a Grenz going, zone? Yeah. Okay. Um, you mean like a layer where it's not involved? Or yeah. You, okay. Yeah. Well, I find, you know, in, I only really think of Grenz in the setting of derm path, not so much mucosal okay. sites. But regardless, I also find, even though a lot of people talk about Grenz zone and teach it, I personally find that it, for most of the time, is not that helpful of a concept in derm path. It's, it's very popular. Everyone loves to talk about Grenz zone. And so I'm probably one of the outliers there that I'm always like, things that are supposed to have Grenz zone sometimes don't. And the one time I find in the skin is granuloma facial almost always has a nice, well-developed Grenz zone. So I find that's one time that it's really obvious. But... I feel like it's a concept that's taught a lot, but in practicality, for me at least, I don't find it too useful. But but I, your thinking of it is is totally reasonable because people always talk about it. But it just is one of those things that never really clicked for me, even though people say it's a useful feature. So maybe I'm just not good enough to figure it out. So yeah, this loose kind of mixoidy stuff with spindle cells. Okay. And then here we get a little bit more cellular areas, kind of up here right under the surface. Okay, so did you have an idea for what this might be? Uh, I came up with a differential. Okay. Two things, so like a fibroepithelial stromal polyp versus okay. uh, the embryonal uh, rhabdomyosarcoma of the patriot thing. Very good. I think that's a very reasonable differential because fibroepithelial stromal polyps that can be seen in genital sites, they can get very cellular and weird looking, and it's always good to think about this. I I don't know if they can occur in the cervix. So I'm not a gynecologic pathologist. I'm guessing that probably they can. But I guess the times I mainly have seen them is in the vulva. Um, but that's purely probably because of I'm a derm path. And so that's the ones that end up coming to me. But they can look weird. And it's always good to think about that benign option for weird looking spindly tumors in the, the genital region. But in this young kid with the polypoid mass in in you know either in the vagina or the the bladder and one of those hollow viscous organs that's like the classic buzzword for botryoid uh, type embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma and these usually are loose and very hypocellular i mean look you would never look at that if someone gave you a high power picture and said oh rhabdomyosarcoma no one would think that right it doesn't look anything like it so this is one of those where that classic history and the, the low power pattern really really help us these are classically supposed to have a layer of increased cellularity right underneath the epithelium, which is called the cambium layer. I think it's like the cambium layer in like trees or something, something with like, I think there's like those different layers, the xylem, the phloem and stuff oh, yeah. inside of plant stems. But I have, no, I can't remember that at all. I like to garden, but I know nothing <laughs> about botany, like nothing. So in any case, I, you, someone out there, if you're listening to this and you know more about cambiums, cambia, than uh than me you can you can educate me please but i've only seen a handful of these and i would say that the cambium layer is one of these things that's a real cool concept but in in real life i don't feel as as well developed and and beautiful as it's shown in books sometimes but the idea is that you do get condensation of the stromal cells and it tends to be kind of kind of close to the epithelium so you know i i kind of feel like here we're getting a bit of a cambium layer i don't know I, again i think it's kind of a stretch so um, and this case was, of course, oh, wait, maybe we had a better area on one of the other pieces. Let me look. Oh, yeah, there. I think you can see a little bit here. See how the spindle cells are kind of clustering a little closer together, but you got to really hallucinate. Let's face it, okay? And, you know, someone really smart, uh, Alex Lazar, he's a dermatopathologist and soft tissue pathologist at MD Anderson. He said something we were giving a course together, and he said, you know, when you have to go and like look for an hour to find in your study set to find one slide that shows the classic characteristic finding, maybe that means that that classic characteristic finding is not really that helpful. Like maybe it's a specific finding, but it's very low sensitivity if you have to really hunt around forever to find one example in your study set to take a picture of for a book. 
But of course, we like to take pictures like that when we write books or we make videos or or whatever for teaching. We want to show the classic example, but it's also good, I think, for us to see the range of non-classic things because that's what we see in real life, right? Is we see the stuff that breaks the rules and doesn't follow. And sometimes by seeing only the prettiest of pictures in books, we can uh, get a little deceived into what things can really run the range of in real life. So this was uh, Desmond positive, Maya Jean and positive. And my understanding is that these have a really good prognosis overall. Um, I don't know much about the treatment, but they have specific protocols. Most of the pediatric rhabdomyosarcomas, they have specialized protocols and are handled by uh, pediatric oncology people. So I don't really know uh, about all of that, but I do know that what I've read is that this is usually a good, uh, good behavior. So very nice example, I think. And good thing to keep in mind. Okay, let's see what's next. 